What's up, everybody? This is Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Tech Plus certification exam. So let's get into it. In this video, we're going to explore key components of an operating system. Understanding these elements is critical for anyone studying for the CompTIA Tech Plus exam. And by the end of this video, you'll have a solid understanding of the file systems, file management, system applications, utilities, services, processes, drivers, interfaces, and file attributes. The file system is a crucial part of an operating system as it determines how data is stored and organized on storage devices. So let's explore some key characteristics of file systems. Let's talk about compression. So compression, this reduces the size of files and folders to save disk space. And there are two main types. First one is lossless compression, and this reduces file size without losing any data. So for example, think of a zip file, and then we have what is called lossy compression, and this reduces the file size, but may lose some data quality, and this is typically used for audio and video files. Compression can improve storage efficiency, but may affect performance when files are being accessed or modified. Another component is encryption. So encryption, this secures files by converting them into unreadable formats without a key. This helps protect sensitive information from unauthorized access and common encryption standards include AES or advanced encryption standard, which is widely used for data security. Next, we have types and extensions. So the type of file system determines how files are named, stored and access and common file system types include NTFS, which stands for new technology file system. And this is used by windows and supports large file size permissions, encryption and compression. Then we have what is called FAT32, and that stands for File Allocation Table 32. And this is an older file system type that is compatible with many devices, but is limited to a maximum file size of four gigabytes. And then we have EXT4, which stands for Fourth Extended File System. And this is a common Linux file system that supports journaling for data integrity and file extensions like .txt and .exe or .jpeg. They indicate file types and determine how the operating system handles each file. Wow. Next, let's talk about file management. So file management within an operating system involves how files and folders are organized, named, and accessed. So let's break down some of the key concepts. First one is folders and directories. So folders, which are also known as directories, are containers used to organize files in a hierarchical structure. So think of folders like a file cabinet, where each cabinet contains folders and each folder contains documents. This helps users efficiently store and retrieve files. Then we have permissions. So permissions, they control access to files and directories. And the most common permission types include read, which allows viewing the contents of a file or directory. Then we have the write permission. This allows modifying or deleting a file or directory. And then we have the execute permission. And this allows running a file as a program. In most operating systems, users are granted different permission levels to maintain security. Then another aspect is naming restrictions. So each operating system has its own rules for naming files and directories. So in Windows, files can be up to 255 characters, but they cannot contain certain symbols like the ones listed on your screen right here. And then in Linux or Unix, file names are case sensitive and can contain almost any character except for the forward slash. So proper file management, this is essential for ensuring organized data, preventing unauthorized access and maintaining a clean system. Next, let's talk about system applications and utilities. So an operating system provides essential system applications and utilities that help users manage their computers. So let's explore some of these tools. So let's talk about the system applications. These are core applications provided by the operating system for common tasks. So we have things like File Explorer and Finder. So in Windows, this is known as the File Explorer and in Mac it's called the Finder. And these tools allow you to navigate, open and manage files and control folders. Then we have the control panel and the settings. This is where users configure the system settings like display options, network connections, and device management. Then we have utilities. Utilities, these are specialized tools to perform maintenance tasks. So we have utilities like disk cleanup and storage management. This utility helps free up space on your drive by deleting unnecessary files. Then we have the task manager and the activity monitor. These allow you to view running applications and processes as well as system performance. Then we have antivirus, anti-malware software. This protects the system from malicious software. So system applications and utilities are essential for maintaining system health, configuring settings, and ensuring a smooth user experience. 
Another important component of the operating system is how it manages services and processes. So services, which are sometimes called background processes, are programs that run in the background to perform specific tasks. So for example, we have what is called the print spooler. This manages print jobs that are sent to a printer. And then we have what is called the web server service. This hosts websites and serves pages to users on the network. And services can start automatically with the operating system or be started manually as needed. Then we have what are called processes. So a process, this is any running instance of a program. So each program or application opened by the user starts one or more processes. And there are two main types of processes. The first one is called a foreground process. And this is visible to the user, like your web browser or text editor. And then we have what is called a background process. And these are hidden from the user. And these are often system services that support the foreground processes. So by managing services and processes effectively, Effectively, an operating system can ensure that multiple tasks are performed simultaneously without disrupting the user experience. Next, let's talk about drivers. So drivers are specialized software that allows the operating system to communicate with hardware devices. So think of drivers as translators between hardware components and the operating system. So for example, when you connect a printer to your computer, a print driver is needed to send the correct print commands. And graphic card drivers, they allow the operating system to fully utilize the GPU's capabilities for rendering images and video. So drivers ensure that hardware devices function properly and they often need to be updated to maintain compatibility with the operating system or to add new features. Next, let's talk about interfaces. So the interface is how users interact with the operating system. And there are two main types. The first one is the console or the command line interface. So with CLI, this allows users to interact with the operating system by typing commands into a console or terminal. While it may seem complex, it's very powerful for executing tasks quickly and efficiently, particularly for system administrators or power users. And examples include the following. You have what is called Windows Command Prompt or PowerShell. Then for Mac or Linux, they use what is called Bash or other shells. Then we have what is called the graphical user interface. So a GUI, this provides a visual way for users to interact with the operating system through windows, icons, and menus. And it's more user friendly than a CLI and is what most people use on a daily basis. And some examples include the Windows desktop environment, and this includes the start menu, the taskbar, and Windows for different applications. And Mac, it provides what is called a dock, the file explorer, and a menu bar. And then in Linux desktop environments, they have what is called GNOME, KDE Plasma, or XFCE. Both interfaces have their use cases. The GUI is for ease of use in visual navigation, and the command line interface is for powerful and efficient command execution. Lastly, let's look at the file attributes and properties. So attributes and properties provide additional information about a file or directory and control how it behaves. And some common file attributes include the read only attribute, and this prevents modification of the file. Then we have the hidden attribute. This makes a file invisible to standard directory listings unless special settings are enabled. And then we have the archive attribute, and this indicates that the file has changed and needs to be backed up. Now, file properties, they provide more detailed information, such as the file size. And this indicates the amount of space the file occupies on a disk. Then we have the data created modified property. And this lists when the file was originally created or last modified. And then we have the file type property. And this is based on its extension, such as the .txt for text files or the .exe for executable files. Understanding these attributes and properties helps users and administrators manage files efficiently, control access and keep track of file modifications. So to summarize, we've covered key concepts of an operating system, including the file system characteristics, which offers compression, encryption, types, and extensions. We talked about file management. This is the organization of folders, permissions, and naming restrictions. We talked about system applications and utilities. These are tools for managing and maintaining your system. We talked about services and processes. These are background tasks that keep your system running smoothly. We talked about drivers. These are the links between hardware and the operating 
operating system. We talked about interfaces. These are the ways users interact with the operating system, either through the command line interface or the graphical user interface. And we talked about file attributes and properties. And these are additional details and behaviors of files and directories. So understanding these core concepts is vital for mastering how operating systems work and is key for passing the CompTIA Tech Plus certification exam. All right, now with all of that said, let's get into some of this check on learning. So which of the following file system types supports file encryption and compression in Windows? Would it be NTFS? Would it be FAT32? Would it be XFAT? Or would it be HFS plus? And the correct answer is NTFS, our new technology file system. And this supports file level encryption, compression, and advanced permissions. FAT32 and XFAT are simpler file systems that do not provide these features. And HFS Plus, this is used by Mac and is not native to Windows file system. Next question, which of the following tools is used in most operating systems to manage system processes and services? Would it be disk cleanup? Would it be task manager? Would it be file explorer? Or would it be command prompt? And the correct answer is the task manager. So the task manager is used to view and manage running processes, services, and system performance. Disk cleanup is used to free up disk space. File Explorer is for managing files. And Command Prompt is a console interface for running commands. Final question, which of the following is a naming restriction for files in most modern operating systems? Is it files cannot contain spaces in their names? Is it files cannot have more than 128 characters in the name? Is it files cannot contain special characters like the asterisk or the question mark? Or is it files cannot use numbers in their names? And the correct answer is files cannot contain special characters like the asterisk or the question mark. So most operating systems restrict the use of special characters in file names because they are reserved for specific system functions. In files, they can contain spaces and numbers, and the length limit varies depending on the file system.